Hey, I'm Brendan Moran, and welcome to Crete Currents. This episode, we've got a special guest host, Julie Herman. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. It's great to be here. You and I are old buddies when I went to your business, Canvas and Cabernet, downtown Walnut Creek. That's a, uh, what do they call it? The paint, paint and sip. sip. Mm -hmm. I like that. I had a lot of fun. And you did a great job, too. Uh, you're just saying. That was more the sipping, I'm sure, that <laughs> had something to do with that. This episode, though, we've got something a little bit different. We're going to show you the surprising history behind a local hotel, and I will show you there's a lot more going on behind the gates of Rossmore than you might think. But first up, I got to visit a local restaurant that's offering craft brews and cosmopolitan cuisine. Hi, we're here at Kanishka's Gastro Pub today to try a new take on old world cuisine. Come on in. with executive chef and owner of Kanishka's Gastro Pub, Paramita Roy. Paramita, tell us a little bit about what was your inspiration behind the restaurant. So um, my inspiration, um, you know, lies goes way behind. So it started all uh, from my Calcutta days, you know, and from my grandfather's house, um, a huge house of entertainment. You know, he was born and brought up with scotch and beer. So watching him uh, cook and entertain for, you know, every single weekend, uh, like guests coming in on every single festival occasions, like 100, 200 people dining. That's what originated my inspiration, you know, for dream of opening my own restaurant. Um, and as gradually I grew up and, you know, and had my kid, I mean, my uh, biggest inspiration was my 11-year-old um, son who just turned 12, who, who I named my restaurant after. Um, you know, he was my biggest support of, you know, Mama, you got to, you know, you always talk about opening the restaurant. Everybody, you know, been working a lot towards it. You know, traveled around the world. You know, learned about all the cuisine. You know, but you've just got to, you know, step into it and do it. And um, you got to do it now before you get too old. And that word, those words, just uh, struck me. And then right after I came back, and um, you know, I just didn't stop from anything. I just, you know, made all my you know, models like financial models, operational plans, you know, whatever I need to pull together, like investments, everything, you know, this has to be made into a reality. So that's wonderful. With all of that inspiration and all of the research and preparations that you did, what made you choose Walnut Creek as a destination for your restaurant? You know, great um, thoughts. So, you know, I moved back to um, Bay Area in uh, 2008 from Manhattan and uh, I, I used to travel here a lot and I just love the downtown you know the people and the ambiance and you know the shops and it's like the perfect you know it's like the all-in-one contains like a big city in one you know like a neighborhood like a small downtown just love the you know warmth you know my heart was you know in Walnut Creek mm -hmm. and I was like and I just you know kept on just said, like okay my kids also like, you know, they were in Walnut Heights area. And so like in my, you know, I would be able to close with my family, being able to serve the community. You know, the community has been so helpful, you know, there's so like, let me just bring something with all my heart and passion and get this going like a hometown first. Um, and so this, you know, apparently this location came into right on spot and just immediately, you know, worked out. So I understand this is the original fire station for the city of Walnut Creek in the early 1920s. Tell me more about how you chose this space. Sure. Um, so my uh, commercial real estate agent, he was well connected with the landlord. And when he first introduced to me, you know, and I, it's, you know, he wanted to know about the concept of the restaurant, the food, and, you know, and while talking about it, you know, he loved that as well as he also, you know, loved talking about the history behind this, um, you know, the restaurant location because he wanted to, you know, give the space to someone that, you know, he would have a great relationship of trust and, you know, the both ways, you know, going in, someone stepping into the restaurant location. And that's when he shared about the history that I came to know that, there, you know, this used to be a fire station, uh, you know, back in the uh, 19, early 1920s. And, you know, and knowing that it was, you know, it was, it was like, wow, that's, you know, that's a great. And apparently I came to know even my, you know, little twins, you know, when I shared this story with my twins, with my eight-year-old twins, they learned this in their uh, classroom. 
you know, suddenly, you know, how, you know, how funny that, you know, your little kids get to learn from their school teachers and, you know, parents get to learn from little kids about, you know, this little, uh, you know, interesting history about Walnut Creek, you know, growing up. So as an artist, I have to ask about all the amazing art that you have on the walls here. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? Yes. So, um, you know, I have a friend, um, her name is Joanne Bennett. And um, this is before the restaurant was opening. Um, I was in search for artists, you know, for the opening uh, night. So um, to be able to showcase, you know, the paintings or whether it would be photography. Um, and she approached, uh, approached me, you know, if, if you could, um, you know, she could be able to do a series for me. So my vision was, to, you know, for the first take to bring in a, you know, fusion of global, you know, catwalk fashion. Mm -hmm. And I gave her the pitch and I, you know, and she shared with me some samples and, you know, we both worked together and then she came up with a, you know, like a couple of pieces and I just simply, okay, it just clicked me. Okay, this is it. This has to be on my opening night of Kanishkas. So then she drew the entire series of connecting, you know, one pieces to another, you know, that connects the, you know, the global, um, you know, the culture of fashion, like the our catwalk fashion, and this, which also ties to, you know, the global cuisine with Indian flavors. And, you know, it's like a bit of pop art. So, Julie, are you excited to try some of our food? Absolutely. Okay, great. Like, you know, so what I'd like to present is, uh, you know, some of my most popular dishes that all our diners just pray for. We have the lamb sliders and the street food sliders. So, so here's a shikampuri lamb sliders. So it's a superior farms uh, ground lamb, and it's finished off with some herb spices. Um, it's got some dash of you know minty and cilantro flavor, some delicate spice, and finished off like just about medium on the grill. And it's uh, wrapped up in uh, flaky Indian flatbread, and it's, um, got some arugula, hot and sweet tomato aioli, got some uh, coriander uh, mint chutney that I make it in house with some shoestring onions and it's served with a baby mixed greens, uh, tomato um, salad with the roasted cumin champagne vinaigrette. This looks fantastic. I haven't eaten all day, so. And uh, this is our street food flight, which we recently introduced about, you know, a few weeks ago. And it's, you know, we, are, we have a flight night, which is Thursdays. It's, it's becoming very popular. It's everything about flights, beer flights, wine flights, and street food flights. So the best way to enjoy this progression is, um, you know, starting off with the what we call in Bengali dahi puchka. So it's a puffed wheat shell stuffed with the potatoes, roasted black chickpeas, you know, topped up with a tamarind date chutney, and a tempered yogurt sauce with um, mustard seeds and fresh curry leaves, mm. and topped up with some cucumbers. Uh, next progression is the um, semolina crusted prawn fritter with a mango sauce with some fresh scallions. And this is a croquette of our week, which is a beetroot, carrot, and potato, topped up with the aioli, and some of uh, my, you know, like street style spices that I just tried to bring in from Calcutta. So the last progression um, is the chicken tikka barbecue uh, skewers. You know, it's got to finish up with a little spiciness. It's finished up with a chili mango glaze with a pickled ginger onions. And please go ahead and enjoy. And the best way um, that we uh, suggest our diners is to enjoy this with our beer flights. Uh, so a flight for a flight. Nice. So here's our Belgian beer flight. So it starts off with the Alagash White, a Duval, Alagash Curio, and this is our sour beer, which is a tart of uh, darkness. So then when we try these, do we try this yes. food with this beer and so on like we went through it? Yes, absolutely. The suggested pairing would be um, the Alagash uh, white would go great with the Dahi Puchka, Duval with this, so you can just go with the progression. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> do you pick these up and eat them with your hands? You can pick this up. Exactly. That's best. Okay. These look fantastic. Yes. Really good. Alrighty, so I'm gonna try these. Yeah, now. the best way to have this, yeah, you know, just take one and just 
put the whole thing in the your whole mouth. thing in your yeah, mouth at that, once. That's the best way that you can enjoy it. <laughs> All right. I, you know, that's what I ask my diners too. Cheers. Cheers. I'm go yeah. For it. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. So the um, last uh, suggested flight, which is the um, Tart of Darkness, which is a sour beer. Um, you know, it would go great as a suggested pairing, specifically with the croquette of the week. It's got the beet, carrot, and the potato. Um, so, you know, please enjoy. And uh, then I would, you know, also suggest having a great glass of Pinot Noir that would pair up very well with our Shikampuri lamb sliders. It's got the notes of, you know, um, raspberry, some strawberry flavor. It's got a bright, you know, like a, you know, dark, you know, reddish, and it's from a Sonoma County Pinot Noir. These look fantastic. Yeah. So thank you so much for hosting us. The food was fantastic. The pairings were really wonderful. I really enjoyed myself here this afternoon. How can our local people find out more about you? Thank you um, for joining us today at Kanishka. So I would love to have uh, you know people come to our website. Uh, kanishkasgastropub.com so it's just um, k-a-n-i-s-h-k-a-s gastropub.com all together and where we all do all our you know blast out news just got the feeds from all the social media and it's got the menus open table you know what's coming events weekly events and you know and and also get in contact with me with any uh, private events on catering perfect sounds great thank you thank you Now, Kanishka's can get packed on certain nights. To make sure they have a table waiting for you, head on over to their website and make your reservation online. I will do that. You know, Walnut Creek has a history of being a dining destination. Check out this story of a 1940s supper club. Well, my name is Bill Keir, and uh, as a little boy, I lived here in the Walnut Creek area. My grandparents were Bud and Ruby Price Dean. The story that I love to tell is that uh, my grandmother then went across the street to check out the, the Rogers Hotel. It had been a stagecoach stop and fairly popular before the turn of the last century. And she talked to the proprietor. The guy was running it as a lunch counter she thought this place could be turned around and made into a nice dinner house. So I, they bought the hotel in uh, April of 1935. My builder grandfather, he poured a concrete porch and put up a, a, a sort of a colonial portico and uh, they opened it as the Colonial Inn. And the next thing you knew, we had a, a dinner house that was great chicken dinner with soup and salad and wine and dessert uh, was 75 cents. Full boat, New York steak, filet mignon, kicked it up to a dollar and a quarter. Then, of course, in December of 1941, the war came to the Pacific with uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, and the pace just picked up enormously. The place was jammed. I mean, it was hard to find a place to lay your head down in, in the East Bay with all, of the, with all of the military activity. There was a lot of turmoil during the war. People were uprooted, young couples ending up in, in the hotel. My grandmother, in her memoirs, she, she recalls how often she would counsel people, young wives. It was common in, in the day to uh, get married uh, in Chicago or Milwaukee or someplace as the, the fellow was, was being shipped out. You know, the honeymoon would be a train trip from Chicago to, to Oakland. 
then the young gal would have to figure out, you know, what, what she was going to do. Some of those ended up as waitresses in the dining room of the Colonial Inn. And there's a, been a lot said about the very special time that the Depression and at World War II represent. I mean, the Depression was a time of the country pulling together. And the war was a time of people pulling together. There was, there was a kind of a sense of community and helping one another. It was very much a, let's get this done and, and get this over with. My grandfather just happened to uh, catch wind of a guy who, who at the hotel had been asking whether the, whether the folks that owned it might be interested in, in selling. And so this is uh, 1945. My grandparents, who had paid $20,000 for the hotel, turned around and sold it for $65,000, which they thought was huge economic return. It was in those days. The Rogers Hotel, Colonial Inn, El Cartola, Las Palmas, had a good run until it was ultimately replaced is now represented on the site by the Mechanics Bank. Now there are many ways to celebrate Walnut Creek's centennial this year. For instance, the Healthy Walnut Creek Festival. Head on over to the Centennial website to find out more. Now I recently visited a place where I got a little dose of some healthy competition. Check it out. Hey, I'm Brendan Moran. Today I'm going to get a tour of Rossmore, learn a little bit about the history, and work on my swing. I'm here with John Nutley. He is the resident historian for Rossmore, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the land we're standing on right now, right? Rossmore's been around for quite a while, right John? Yes, we've been here for 50 years, just half of the years of Walnut Creek. Uh, Rossmore started back in 1960 with the purchase of this property in which we're standing in on right now. Behind us is the Dollar Clubhouse, which was re originally the private home of Stanley Dollar, who owned a, an enormous steamship line. When Ross Cortese built Rossmore, his idea was to be a place for active adults. We have about 9,500 people living in about 6,500 units. John, how long have you been here? I've been here for since 1973, so I'm in my 41st year. I'm 90 years old, uh, and I enjoy being here. I've been here since 43, and I loved and lost in here, too. So I'm, what happens to a lot of people in Rossmore is that they come with a husband or wife and have many years of happiness and then lose one of their partners. And then they either find another one or they enjoy just being here with friends, which they have made over the years. So that's one of the joys of being in Rossmar. You don't have to be alone because you can always find somebody to talk with or work with because we have shops you can sew, you can do pottery, you know, there are lots of activities. So it really is a wonderful place to live. So come and see Rossmore, and you'll be captivated by it. John, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for letting me talk to you about Rossmore. I hope you would come and stay with us someday. A couple more years. <laughs> a couple more years. <laughs> I'm here with Dan on the Rossmore Lawn Bowling Fields, Greens, and I'm getting some pointers. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, you're bet. All right, show me how it's done. Well, I don't know about that, but anyway, you can do it on the mat, and you just want to take one little short step off when you release. Good follow through. So are you, are you trying to defend the, uh, the jack, as it's called? From, from me? Right. Okay. All right, one for luck. Here we go. I'm going to like this one. Get, get, get in through there. Get in through there. Oh! Woo! I can get used to this. Darn well, I'll tell you, for never bowling before, that's great. That's what you think. 
I know, you're an Australian champion. That's right, I'm a, I'm a ringer. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. I'm here with Trish Dixon. She is the Rossmore Activities Council president. And so she knows what's going on around here, right? I do. So what's going on around here? There's so much going on around here. This is a terribly vibrant community. Vibrant sounds like an interesting word for a retirement community, but it is indeed vibrant. I'll buy it. We have over 200 clubs here. Uh, lots of sports, fitness center, bocce, as I said, lawn bowling, tennis, pickleball, uh, table tennis, beautiful new table tennis building, uh, international competition going on here. Really? So the whole idea here is to keep people healthy, keep people going, keep people active. And that's just the sports part of it. The rest of it has, has to do probably with a, a, a huge social life. There are many, many dance clubs here, and if you uh, can't dance, you can take lessons. It's just a total community. And there's, there's parties for specific clubs as well, right? So you can really fill up your calendar if you weren't careful. You can overfill your calendar. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of squeezing all these things in to do. Plus the Creekside, wonderful restaurant, wonderful lounge. It's a general get together place. So that's a really big draw for somebody who might be thinking about coming into Rossmore. It's not just you know, the, the homes and so forth, but it's the whole lifestyle that you buy into as well, right? It's definitely a lifestyle. That's exactly what it is. And the prices are just amazing here. Uh, when I go out and speak to groups about Rossmore, as I'm a Rossmore ambassador, uh, the one thing people say is, well, it's full of old people that don't do anything, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. And then that it's too expensive, and it's certainly not. It's the most affordable area uh, in, in Walnut Creek, I think, mm -hmm. and probably in the Bay Area for this type of lifestyle. So there's a lot of people in Rossmore, but it's very diverse, right? It's extremely diverse. Every, everyone that's here has retired from something. So we have master jewelers in the Lapidary Club and master craftsmen in the Ceramics Club. And uh, in the library, we have a whole section of authors that live in Rossmore that have published books. So it's, a, it's just a terribly diversified community. And, and it's a very level play, playing field. You never know who you're speaking with. Yeah. when this comes up. And when I'm on my balcony, I love hearing people walking up and down the street, and I can probably hear five different languages just from my balcony, and it's really a delight. It's a cool place to make friends, I imagine. You can make friends in an instant. Cool. Yeah. Trish, thank you very much for your time. Why don't you get back to it? You're welcome, thanks. I've got a tennis game, gotta go. <laughs> Well, as you can see, there's plenty of stuff to do here at Rossmore, and you don't even need to be very good to do it. There's more information at rossmore.com. Okay, my serve. Now, Rossmore is having their 50th anniversary this year, and they're inviting the whole community to come on out and celebrate. Check out the Rossmore News website for more info. And we'll see you next time on Creek Currents.